My name is Ryan, and this is the story of how I became a new creation in Christ. I came to know Christ between my sophomore and freshman year in the middle of the biggest storm I probably had ever known. I had already attempted to take my life twice at that point, the second time gaining attention and forcing mandated counseling that was not helpful, and I was headed toward self-destruction. If it wasn't going to be in an attempt on my life, I was going to hop on a train and head south, and whatever happened to me happened because I had no self-confidence, no self-worth. So I go to a summer camp, and I remember sitting on a beach because it's at a houseboat trip on the Delta, and the Young Life pastor is talking about all kinds of things. I mean, I knew who God was, and so I was just, at that point, I didn't think he really cared who I was. And then the pastor said something that really shook me from that empty trance. He said that God wanted a personal relationship with me and that he wanted to help me. And I thought, me? It just, it resonated. And so right there, sitting in a fetal position on the ground at a Young Life camp, I prayed and accepted Christ into my heart. And then I went home. And life wasn't different. I was depressed. I was engaging in dangerous behaviors that continued to leave wounds, that continued to affirm that I was a victim, that I really didn't deserve to be loved, that life would really be better off if I wasn't in it. Except that there was this little urge in me that I really needed to get help. And I'd already tried counseling, yet I still felt led towards the school psychologist because there was something in me that just felt like he could help. And the first thing he did when he got me in his office is he had me sign a no harm agreement because he knew what had happened the year before. And that no harm agreement was simply saying that if I felt like I got to a spot where I was contemplating taking my life that I would either call the suicide hotline or I would call him. He put down the number for the suicide hotline and he put down his phone number. And for me, that resonated as this, another beacon of hope. Someone cared. And from an unlikely source, I wasn't expecting that. Otherwise, life continued on the same, but now I was meeting with him. And in those meetings, there was a part of me that wanted to heal, that just wanted to get through this depression and this debilitating, suffocating way of thinking and self-destruction. But there was a larger part of me that just wanted to prove to myself how worthless I was. And so for every step I'd take towards healing, I'd take two steps towards how can I engage in some behavior or some decision that will confirm for me that I am worthless. And then I started to change. I was attending church youth group, although still at a very surface level. I had a group of friends that were Christian friends. This group of girls that accepted me, even though I still felt not like myself, not really worthy of friends, they were always so loving to me. And I had this school psychologist who continued to meet with this mess and that hope that Jesus started in me continued to grow. I wanted to live. It wasn't perfect and there were still lots and lots of moments where healing took a back seat because it was scary. Honestly, I thought a lot of it was just chance and luck that things were going right. And it wasn't until I started to really dive into God's Word and understand what He, His plan was, I started to see past who I had thought I was, who the enemy had convinced me I was, to who Christ saw me as. A woman that is loved, a woman that is redeemed, a woman who's healed and forgiven. He taught me that I had to forgive myself, even though he'd already forgiven me.